waiting for the first act of The Shadow's latest adventure to begin, I'd like to ask every motorist to do this. Take a ride on the new Goodrich Safety Silvertown tire. See for yourself how it grips wet, slippery roads like you never felt a tire grip before. That's because the amazing Silvertown Lifesaver tread acts like a battery of windshield wipers. Sweeps wet roads so dry you can light a match on its track. For the quickest non-skid stops you've ever had, equip your car with Goodrich Silvertown tires. The Shadow, mysterious character who aids those in distress and helps the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the unseen voice belongs. The only one who knows the true identity of that master of other people's minds, the shadow. Today's story, The Man Who Murdered Time. Yes, Stuart? Mr. Cranston, on behalf of all the employees of the club, I wish to thank you for your generous New Year's gift to the personnel. It's quite all right, Stuart. Happy New Year. The same to you, sir. And may I thank you, too, Mr. Hughes, for your gift. You're very welcome, Stuart. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, too, sir. I wish I could have made it more, Cranston, but it hasn't been a terribly good year for me. Well, I'm sorry to hear it, Hughes. Oh, by the way, how is Mrs. Hughes feeling these days? Poorly. Well, the doctors at the sanitarium say she may pull out of it next year. That's why I'm looking forward to the New Year so eagerly. Well, Hughes, if uh, there's anything I can do in the way of financial assistance... Thanks, old man, but it won't be necessary... I expect to be out of debt very shortly. Business improving? No, a trust fund is coming due in two weeks. Inheritance from my Uncle Matthew, you know. Well, I'm delighted to hear it, you, sir. It's four o'clock. Well, only eight hours to a brand new year and new hope for all of us. Amen to that. Hey, you're coming to my New Year's Eve party tonight, aren't oh, you? Oh, I meant to tell you, Cranston. Uh, I'll be late. I got a call this morning from a second cousin of mine. Wants me to come to see him this evening. Brilliant scientist, but I suspect he's losing his mind. Oh, Know what he claims to have invented? A time machine. A, a time machine? Yes. Fantastic, isn't it? Well, come, Hughes. Is anything really fantastic in the modern world of science? Thirty years ago, the notion that a human voice could circle the Earth without the aid of wires would have been called not only fantastic, but impossible. Radio, electric light, airplanes, all were called fantastic in their time, but today they're accepted facts. Why not the time machine? Well, I'm from Missouri. Anyway, I'm really going to see my cousin, not because of his alleged invention, but, well, because he's dying. Oh, that's too bad. Yes, the poor chap's got an incurable heart condition. He uh, told me his doctors don't give him more than a few days to live. Well, I've got to be off. And see you tonight, then, Hughes. Only a miracle will keep me away, Cranston. A miracle like, like the time machine. <laughs> <laughs> Drink this water. There. Feel better now? Yes. Yes, better use. Perhaps you'd better get into bed, Willard. <sighs> Frankly, I, I didn't expect to find you up and about, dressed to kill. Dressed to kill. Very good. Such an apt phrase. Well, why not? This is probably the last day of my life. Well, I'm sure it's not as bad as all that, Willard. If you take care of yourself... Come, come, use. I'll never see the new year. That's what you're really thinking. Know what I've done today? What, Willard? The things I've wanted to do all my life. Packed them all into this one long, glorious day. I've smoked two-dollar cigars, eaten the finest foods, bought thousands of dollars worth of completely useless things just for the fun of indulging myself. Well, I thought that <laughs> Did I'm broke? I am. Then how did you... Borrowed, dear cousin. Spent other people's money, incurred enormous debts. <laughs> Payable next year. Next year, which will never come. I'm sorry, Willard. Oh, what are you sorry about? I'm not. Matter of fact, I've just begun to celebrate. And you must join me, Hughes. Absolutely insist. I bought a marvelous sherry today, a rare vintage. You rang, sir? Uh, you needn't bother. The sherry, John. Yes, sir. I have it here, sir. Fine, fine. Put it on the table. Shall I pour, sir? No, I'll do it myself. That's all, John. Very good. Hey, you are, Hughes. Drink hearty. Thank you. How do you like it? Nectar. Ambrosia, huh? It has a peculiar flavor, hasn't it? Oh, it'll grow on you. Finish it, Hughes. Drink, 
To my last day on earth. Oh, no, no, Willard. Not to that. To my last day on earth. And yours, my dear cousin. To my last day? Hughes, I told you that today I meant to satisfy every ambition I ever had. Well, I've left for the last my greatest ambition of all. To kill you. To kill me? <laughs> Why, you're, you're joking. Think so, Hughes? But, but why? What have I ever done to you? What haven't you done to me? You've been a bone in my throat ever since we were boys together. I, I believe you're, you're really but serious. If it hadn't been for you, I'd have been Uncle Matthew's fair-haired boy, his favorite, his pet. He would have raised me in luxury instead of you. You quarreled with him. You were a... He would have left me his money, not you, you Judas. You had everything while I starved, scraped, suffered... I've brooded over that, my fine cousin, a whole lifetime. And now, this wonderful day, this last day of the year, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you not once, but a thousand times. You see that machine in the corner? I see, Willard. Calm down. That's my time machine. Your, your time machine, yes, yes. I remember your saying... You know what this machine can do? It can prevent the future from happening. <laughs> the future from happening? Oh, now, now, look, Willard, look. Let me call your physician. Don't be a fool. I'm as sane as you are. That's a scientific machine, not a madman's toy. Do you know how it works? Of course not. I'll explain it in simple terms. Use what is time? Why, time is... Time Time is is like a railroad track. A straight railroad track used, and the world is a train running along that track. On the track behind us lies yesterday, December 30th. The day we're traveling along that section of track we call December 31st. And at midnight tonight, the train, you, I, the whole universe, is scheduled to plunge straight ahead into January 1st of the new year. You follow me so far, you? Yes. What has this to do with your so-called time machine? Just this. By using a revolutionary principle of physics, my own discovery, my machine bends the straight track of time, curves it, curves it, so that the time track forms a perfect circle. <laughs> You fool, it's a scientific fact. I've done it. You're mad, I say, mad. Listen to me, Hughes. At midnight tonight, when I turn on the switch, time will instantly be curved back on itself. So that instead of continuing into January 1st, we'll go back 24 hours. We'll live December 31st over again and again and again like a phonograph needle caught in a groove. You expect me to believe that this day will never end, that you can make December 31st repeat itself forever? <laughs> Laugh, you fool. You won't last long. Today, I've been especially careful to make it the fullest, happiest day of my life because I'm going to live this wonderful day forever. I'll catch time in that groove and hold it there. The future will never come. I'll never have to pay my debts despite my bad heart. I'll never die. Well, I'll have to be as insane as you to believe that. Would you like a demonstration? Playing the farce out to the end, are you? Well, go ahead. Demonstrate. That's the proper scientific spirit you use. I'll set the machine to affect merely this house and ourselves. What incident of the last half hour do you want me to make repeat itself? Choose. Oh, the butler and the sherry. John and the sherry, eh? Very good. And I want you to bear in mind that just as time will be repeated here in this room for the next few moments, so can I repeat time throughout the whole world, not once, but again and again. Now, let me adjust my machine. There. Now to close the circuit. You rang, sir? Really, Will. Uh, the sherry, John. Yes, sir. I have it here, sir. Fine, fine. Put it on the table. Did I pour, sir? No, I'll do it myself. That's all, John. Very good, sir. There. The automatic circuit cut us off, and we're back in ordinary time again. Convinced, Hughes? It can't be. It's impossible. It's a trick, a dream, a nightmare. (laughs) You'll be saying that for all eternity. I'm getting out of here. Are you, cousin? Try it if you can. (laughs) I can't. I'm paralyzed. I, I can't get out of this chair. You feel yes. pain now, don't you, you? Yes. Yes, horrible pain. You shouldn't have drunk the sherry, you. 
Your glass contained a slow poison, you see. No! No, help! Help! There's an antidote on the table. You see that little green bottle you is just beyond the reach of your fingers? Isn't it ironic? If you could only move your arm five inches. Try. Oh, you can't. Dear me, how very, very sad. All you can do is look at the antidote while you die in agony. Please, please, will it help me? Help me! I don't want to die! Just a little while now, cousin, a little while. It's almost midnight. You'll die just before midnight. And then I'll turn on my machine. Set it to affect the whole world forever. And time all over the world will snap back 24 hours. Everybody in the world will live December 31st over again and again, forever and ever. <laughs> you too, you. No, no. You'll visit me again. Drink the poison cherry again. Die again. Live again. Die again. Oh, the Martin party of yours is the loveliest New Year's Eve party I ever attended. Margo, you danced beautifully. <laughs> Thanks, Lamont. I wonder what's happened to yours. He said he'd be late, but I didn't think... Hold it, everybody! Here comes the New Year! Happy New Year, Lamont. Not yet, Margo. Lamont, where are we? I'm still in your arms dancing with you, but it, it's not the party, the, the New Year's Eve party in your apartment. How could that be? I, I don't know, Margot. What, what was that awful crash? I don't know. But look around you, Margot. We're dancing in the Honolulu Club. But we were dancing in the Honolulu Club right here last night. Last night at midnight. I, I mean, 24 hours ago. Oh, I, I don't know what I mean. Keep dancing with me, Margo. I've got to figure this out. Seems like a dream, and yet... That's it, Lamont. It's a dream. I dreamed through the whole day, December 31st, right up to midnight. Then that crash, and I woke up here in the Honolulu Club. Margo, it wasn't a dream, I tell you. Then what was it, Lamont? I don't know. I don't know. But something's gone wrong, Margo. Something's gone wrong with the whole world. But everything seems all right, Lamont. Margo... Hold on to me. Don't let go. Let's walk back to our table. Well, all right, but I don't understand. Yeah, keep holding on to me. Margot, do you remember last night, just about this time as we were dancing, a waiter accidentally dropped a whole tray full of dishes? Why, yes, that, that's so, Lamont. <coughs> Lamont, it's happened. He dropped it just as he did last night. Yes. I see it all now, Margot. We actually lived through December 31st. We, everybody, the whole world... But just as the last stroke of midnight came, something happened to time. Time? Yes. Time snapped back 24 hours. Instead of going on to January 1st, the world went back to the first moment of December 31st. But nobody else seems to realize what's happened. Yes, that is strange. Apparently everybody's forgotten that they lived through the last day of the year. Why do we remember? Margot, I believe that the same power that makes me invisible to others has something to do with this. What do you mean, Lamont? Years ago in India, I was studying with the yogi priests. I developed my powers of concentration, my power of will, to such an extent that apparently this accident of time doesn't affect me. How long I'll be able to fight against it, I don't know. But I haven't your power, Lamont. Why do I remember, too? Margot, because at the instant time flashed back, you happened to be dancing with me. You were in my arms, within the aura of my will, my influence. No. Just so long as you're touching me, you'll remember, too. Oh, Lamont, I can't believe it. I can't. Well, then try it. Let go of me. Go on, let go, Margo. Well, all right. You're right, Lamont. You remember the Higgins, don't you? Margo. Yes, that's the family. Margo, stop. Well, they're very Margo, anxious that me. you and I go south Margo. of the beach. Uh, what am I saying? What happened? Oh, Lamont, you're holding me again. Margo, the instant you let go of me, you said exactly what you said 24 hours before. When I grabbed you, you snapped back, free of the new time spell. Then it's true. 
Oh, Lamont, I'm afraid. Don't let go of me. Steady, Margot. Oh, but it's horrible. People will go on living through December 31st to eternity, never knowing, never realizing. Lamont, there'll never be a new year. You're absolutely right. Unless this can be stopped. But how can anyone stop it? Nothing human could have caused a thing like this to happen. I'm not so sure, Margot. Hughes told me that a cousin of his, a brilliant scientist, claimed to have invented a time machine. That cousin of Hughes may be responsible for what's happened to time. But who is this man? Where did he live? Hughes didn't say. I'll have to find him some way. And when I do, Margot, it'll be as the shadow. Perhaps the shadow will be able to switch time back to normal. Bring the new year to a world doomed to live a day which never ends. <laughs> In just a minute, the curtain rises on Act Two of The Shadow's Adventure. Meanwhile, a word to you motorists. Do you slow down passing a school? Do you pass other cars on a hill? Do you come to a full stop at street intersections? The shadow wonders. The terrific toll of deaths and injuries indicates that too many motorists fail to exercise caution, fail to consider the other fellow. Play safe. It pays. And motorists, here's one thing more. If you only realize the importance that safe tires, too, play in safe motoring, you wouldn't hesitate a minute to put the new Goodrich Safety Silver Towns with the Lifesaver Tread on your car. For remember, this new Silver Town is much more than a new tire. It's a new kind of tire safety. On the inside, it has the famous blowout protection of the Goodrich Golden Ply. And on the outside, it has the amazing new Lifesaver Tread. The tread that sweeps wet roads so dry, you can actually light a match on its track. Yes, sir, that's plenty dry. So it's hardly surprising that Silver Towns will give you the quickest non-skid stops you've ever had. Margo, keep holding on to me. I will, Lamont. We can walk. My apartment isn't far. Oh, why don't you let me come with you? No, Margot. This is the shadow's job. Maybe dangerous. I want you to be safe. Safe in a world gone mad? Oh. Well, watch yourself. The streets are slippery with ice. Here. Hold on to me more tightly. Uh. We'll cross here. Remember, Margot, last night, on this very spot? Same taxi, the same corner, same poor woman struck down. It, it's happened all over again. Yes, Margot, and it'll happen all over again every 24 hours from now until doomsday. Oh, it's frightening. Look at that woman over and over. Unless I can put time back on its track, Margot. I must. Let's hurry. Oh, look at that poor man shivering in the doorway there. He hasn't even an overcoat. He looks hungry, poor devil. Margot. Remember last night? In a moment, he'll step out of that doorway and ask me for a dime. Excuse me, mister. Could you give me a dime for a cup of coffee? I'm so cold, I'm freezing. Oh, thanks. Thanks, mister. There's one thing I'm glad of, Lamont. He doesn't know. He doesn't know he's doomed to shiver and freeze and starve like that forever. And millions like him. Millions of unfortunate shivering and starving all over the world tonight. That machine. I must find that machine. Well, here we are, Margot. Don't bother to take me up. There's so much for you to do. So much, Lamont. The doorman will let me in. It's exactly the same time we got home last night. Good evening, Miss Lane. Bad night, ain't it? Hurry, Lamont. Find Hughes' cousin. Since time's repeating himself... Well, I always say when... Hughes will meet me in the afternoon at my club. Just as he weather. met me yesterday. We'll talk as we talk then. Perhaps he'd be able to tell me... Lamont, what's the matter? You're so pale suddenly. It's funny. I felt weak just then. I as if my strength, the strength of my will were fading away. Could it be that Lamont, I too... Lamont, you mustn't. You've got to be strong. The world needs your strength. Well, I don't Let go of me, Margot. All right. Last You're draining my power, my strength away. Let go. The wind is very biting, Miss Lane. Yes, it is. Fred, will you take me up to my apartment? Yes, yeah, sure, Miss Lane. Gone. Safe upstairs. 
Goodbye, Margot. Until tomorrow. Tomorrow, Heba comes. Mr. Clem, on behalf of all the employees of the club, I wish to thank you for your generous Stuart, New Year's gift to the listen personnel. Listen to me. Can't you hear? Don't you the understand what I'm saying to you? And may I thank you, too, Mr. Hughes, for your gift. You're Stuart. welcome, Stuart. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Stuart, stop. I wish I could have made it more, Cranston, but it hasn't been a terribly good year for Hughes, me. Hughes, let me take your hand. You're merely repeating what you said 24 hours ago. Poorly, don't now listen to me. say she may pull out of it. Who is your cousin? Year. That's why Who I'm is looking he? forward he to the New Year so eagerly. Oh, hopeless. He's not attuned to my will. I'll have to follow him. Make him lead me to this cousin of his. Expect to the be out of debt very shortly. I must concentrate. My willpower seems to be failing. I must hold on until Hughes visits his cousin. Convince Hughes? Can't be. It's impossible, Willard. It's a trick, a dream, a nightmare. You'll be saying that for all eternity. I'm getting out of here. Are you, cousin? Fido, if you can. I can't. I can't. I'm paralyzed. I can't get out of this chair. Hughes, you can. You You're not paralyzed. Now, yes. don't you? Hughes? Yes, horrible pain. Hughes, there is no pain. You None. shouldn't have drunk. You hear me? Hughes. Your glass contained the slow poison. No, see. no help, help. I have helped you, Hughes. You were not poisoned. I substituted this antidote for the poison in the glass of sherry Willard handed you. You're not poisoned, I tell you. Exert your will, attune it to mine. Try to get out of that chair. Hold me. Hold me. Now try. I've broken the grip of the time spell a little. I made something happen that didn't happen yesterday. You did something just now you didn't do then. You drank the antidote instead of the poison. Try. Try yours. I, I heard a voice. A voice. But there's no one here. No one but... but... Try. Try, it said. Chair. Out of the chair. Ah. Uh. I'm standing. I'm free. Free. Thank the Lord. Hughes, can you hear me now? Who are you? Who are you? I, I see only Willis. I don't think he sees me. I, I feel someone holding me. Who are you? Never mind who I am, Hughes. Get out of this house at once. Go to the home of your friend, Lamont Cranston. Yes, yes. You are to attend the New Year's Eve party there. Yes. Remember? Yes, yes. I, I seem to remember. Go now, Hughes. You don't need me to hold you now. I will you to go. Yes, yes. little while yes, yes. now, cousin. A little while. It's almost midnight. You'll die just before midnight. <laughs> I... Where am I? Who is that? Ah, uh, you feel my power now, will it? I'm holding you fast. Fast, do you hear? I will. Submit to my will. It dominates you. It snatches you from the field of that evil time spell you cast over the world. I'm powerless in the grip of some invisible force. And it speaks. Who are you? Who? I am the shadow. The shadow? Dr. Willard, you are guilty of the greatest crime ever perpetrated against mankind. You thought to condemn the rest of the world to an eternity of cold and darkness and suffering. No, no, I didn't mean to do that. You wanted an eternal life of pleasure, of evil. You tried to stave off forever the death that hung over you like a sword. I don't want to die. To satisfy your selfishness, you tried to, you did, break the laws of nature. And so you must be punished, Dr. Willard. Punished? How? In a moment, I shall smash your devilish time machine, reduce it to splinters and scrap. And the instant the machine is smashed, time will snap back to normal. Instantaneously, time will take up where it left off when you put the machine into operation. And so will come what you thought to destroy forever. The new year. The blessed new year. That means new hope and happiness for the good and the innocent people of the world. While for you, it will bring what God decreed for you. Death. No. No, don't smash the machine. Give me one more day of life. Just one. And I'll smash it myself. Not one hour. Not one oh. minute. Not one Just second. Don't let me die. Stop. Yes, Margot. The new year. At last. 
my heels. Oh, I'm sorry to be late, Francis. I, I don't know what happened to me. I feel as if I as if I just woke up from a bad dream. I, I, I found myself running, running up here. Mr. Hughes, you're ill. No, he's all right, Margot. You are all right, aren't you, Hughes? Oh, I, I guess I, I am. Uh, what time is it? It's just past 12 o'clock, Mr. Hughes. Happy New Year. New Year? Yes, yes. Happy New Year, everybody. <laughs> Happy New Year, Hughes. Happy, Happy New Year. As a matter of fact, Lamont, it seems to me I had a dream, too. The strangest sort of dream. Perhaps you did, Margot. Well, anyway... Happy New Year, Lamont. Happy New Year. program is based on a story copyrighted by the Shadow Magazine. All the characters and all the places named are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. The Shadow Magazine is now on sale at your local newsstand. The weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does 